Hi guys! Today I'm making replacement faces for the clay head I made of a male stop motion animation puppet. First, draw a line around the puppet's face as shown. The line designates where you want each mold to be positioned at. Ignore the ears. I had to have them removed because they would crumble when making the mold. First, just soften some clay, roll it to a ball, and take the clay head that's already been pre-baked and hardened. Use a paintbrush to dust the face thoroughly with cornstarch, and then press firmly into the ball of clay as shown. Make sure around the head itself, the clay mold is tightly fitted for an accurate mold. When satisfied, remove the head gently. The mold should look something like this. Roll another ball of clay. This time, we're doing the back of the head. Make sure no airs are attached. Dust it with cornstarch thoroughly again, and then press into the clay and push it in deeply enough to account for airs that will attach to the new head back as shown. Then bake both molds in the convection oven, as instructed on the clay packaging. If clay is not, if the clay is not hard, after cool, baked until hardened. When mold is cool, roll some more softened clay as shown. Make sure to make one half with a point as shown. This pointed part of the clay will be pressed into the nose area. If you don't, it will not give a defined nose to the clay face. Press it firmly. Remove some of the excess clay as shown, but don't cut right up to the opening.
use a sculpting tool as shown to remove the central area of the clay. Be careful not to take it too far to the sides as you will destroy the face in the mold if you do. The reason why I do this, it cuts down the amount of time needed to hollow out the inside of the face with the dremel, as I'll demonstrate later in this tutorial. Use the ball tool to smooth the inside and then gently remove the head from the mold. Now use your small smoothing tool to clean up the face. Reshape any little defects if necessary and change facial expression as you want. My expression calls for one, a one-sided grin. The cheek needed to be raised slightly to make the grin realistic. So I added more clay to a pump for this. Keep in mind, don't press too hard because recall that the inside is hollow. Smooth and then use either your alcohol or oil with your paintbrush for some additional smoothing when expression is complete. Remember the airs does not go on the replacement face, it will go on the head back we created earlier. When finished with your faces, bake as instructed on clay packaging. Here's one way to make the eyeballs. You'll need a toothpick, super hold glue, just cut the toothpick as shown and glue eyes to the toothpick. Here's a second method for the eyeballs. You'll need 18 millimeter aluminum wire, cut about a one inch section. You'll need multi-purpose sports pre-wrap or paper tape. Cut a small section of pre-wrap, roll tightly and glue loose ends as shown with fabric glue. Cut the extra material to the tip of the wire on either side. Bend aluminum wire as shown and size accordingly by placing in replacement face. Then attach eyeball with crazy glue or super glue. 
if the eyes or if the eyepiece don't fit into the head grind out the eye socket with the dremel sander and grinder tool until it fits also can dremel out the back of the head if it prevents the eyepiece from moving freely or fitting as shown Use a smoothing tool as shown to polish the face. Keep in mind, as I'm demonstrating the eye attachment and placement, that the head and face has already been shaped. You'll need to shape the head to this shape, however. To shape and carve out the inside of head and face, I demonstrate. When dremeling holes for the eyes, use the eyeball as a guide for how big you want the holes. We're going to need the Dremel tool with a sander attachment to hollow out the underside of the face, as I'll demonstrate. Do this outside, however, as it's extremely dusty and messy. If you don't have a Dremel tool, use an X-Acto knife or a sharp object. Dig out the insides as much as needed for the eye, magnet, and brass tube piece, and use a sandpaper to clean it up. You want to make sure when your face and the back of the head are attached, it makes a clean bind as shown. Sand accordingly. Now let's apply the eyelids to the eye. Cut out little strips as shown and apply as demonstrated. Keep the strip as thin as possible. When you are creating the hole for the magnets, make sure you don't dremel out a hole too deep as you need to account for the brass tube hole that should be pre-dremeled for the neck area. Glue the brass tube inside the neck hole, super glue, then add the magnet and super glue it into place. Make sure the face can fit tightly with the magnet in place. If the face is not adjoining tightly to the head, dremel out some more clay from the face where the magnet is positioned. On the face itself, we won't put magnets, just one magnet per head. You can opt to put two if the magnets are not strong enough to hold the face in place due to its weight. In the faces, you'll add a piece of metal to each face. If you dremel too much clay from the face, just roll out a small piece of clay, shape and attach it in the face where needed with liquid polyclay. Normally it's needed under the metal piece. Bake again and sand or dremel down as needed and add metal with super glue. For the metal, I just use a ball cannon lid. I cut very carefully with garden shear. Put a small piece and use a good super glue. I found crazy glue to be the strongest hole. For some of the faces, I added teeth. I just use a thin strip of clay, white clay, and use a ball tool and an exacto knife to shape as demonstrated.
for some of the face that had a mouth that was more open. I just mixed pink and white paint to a flesh tone and carefully painted the inside of the mouth before adding the teeth. Let dry, then add teeth. When complete, bake again. Now let's paint the faces. I use burnt umber, raw umber, like red, black, white, pink, and dark and light yellow paints and brown paint. You need paint brushes and water also. I added a light watered down wash of the burnt umber and dotted the excess paint with a paper towel. Then I mix brown and yellow to get a tan color. Add more yellow than brown to get an even lighter shade. If you go too dark on the face, just lighten it up uh, with plain yellow paint, light yellow paint. I made a blush color with pink and white paint mixed together and I added this to the cheek and lip. When completely dried, I used glue and embroidery black thread cut into tiny little pieces. Then I added a show to create the eyebrows, shape with the end of an exacto knife to desired shape. You can contour the face with a light wash of burnt umber paint. And when dried, seal with matte mud podge glue. But I know, don't, 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 don't,
paint the back of the head as shown. To get the ears on the back of the head, follow the clay face tutorial I have on my channel. Adding the air will be close to the end of the video. Paint accordingly. To paint the eyelids, use the same paint that was used on the face so it will match. You can make it slightly dark, darker if chosen. Paint eyelids first. When dry, clean up the eyeballs with white paint as shown. Then, with a thin brush, paint the edges of the eyelids with black as shown. I stored my faces and head in an egg cart. I just glued some pieces of backing to the bottom of each egg cup and placed the heads on top as shown. And we're done! Thanks for watching!